Okay. <laughs> Father President, trustees and other members of university boards, distinguished guests, deans and faculty, parents, family friends of our graduates, and the Bronco class of 2018. I, I am delighted to be an honorary member of Santa Clara's class of 2018. For the past 50 years, it seemed everyone in my family was getting a Santa Clara degree. My brother, my two sisters-in-law and their husbands, five nieces and nephews, but not me. Now I will finally get respect at family gatherings. I too am a Bronco. <laughs> As fate would have it, 50 years ago today, July, excuse me, June 16th, 1968, I walked across the stage to get my own undergraduate degree, 50 years ago today. I hope, I hope that 50 years from today, you graduates will feel as fulfilled and blessed as I do. However, at my graduation, my godfather, a crusty Irish policeman, ha had enough halfway through the commencement address and disappeared. We later found him in the bar at the hotel, recovering. Godfathers, I am watching you carefully this morning as a leading indicator of how I'm doing. It's easy to make broad statements about millennials, Gen Xers, and about all college students, but I want to reflect for a few minutes this morning on how you Santa Clara graduates are different from most other college graduates, both because you were different when you came four years ago, but also by how you have been shaped by your Santa Clara experience. Fortunately, what is different about you makes you more attractive to employ employers, to the friends we all hope to accompany throughout our lives, and to the future wife, husband, or partner. Now I have your attention, okay? <laughs> Having taught for 23 years at a well-known secular university and now for 17 years here at Santa Clara, I'm convinced Sarah, Santa Clara graduates are different. I'm going to talk briefly about four characteristics which I think set you apart. I hope each of you in this class of 2018 embraces these four traits as part of your identity. I hope you will always be different in these ways. However, if you don't recognize any of these traits, there will be a remedial year of undergraduate study beginning tomorrow morning. First. Santa Clara grads, I believe, are more compassionate, more empathetic about what others are feeling and how others experience this crazy world and challenging life, particularly when others' experiences are very different from your own. One of our distinguished professors, Tom Plant in psychology, has developed, yes, those are the psychology graduates, Tom Plant developed a test of compassion primarily to track the impact of a Santa Clara undergraduate education on your values. It's given to entering freshmen and graduating seniors. Professor Plant hypothesizes that you were already different when you arrived, more compassionate and more empathetic because of your family upbringing as well as your own personal experiences and choices before Santa Clara. Now, your class's survey is still being tabulated, but based on past classes, the compassion and empathy that you have for others has increased while you've been at Santa Clara. And greater increases in compassion are correlated and increased by feeling valued as part of our community, participating in your service learning opportunities, taking workshops, in racial and cultural sensitivity and exploring the varied religious and spiritual experiences which are available here. Here's the advantage of being more compassionate and empathetic. If you are, you recognize how the lives of others are different than yours 
and how others may think and feel differently. You can manage teams and organizations more effectively. You can tap into the feelings of consumers and audiences more effectively. And you can create ventures and public programs that address the real problems that others have. What I, when I have been more compassionate and attentive in my own life, I think I've been a better teacher, a better friend, a better manager. Those times I was preoccupied with myself, things always started to go wrong. And those have been painful lessons. So, number one, be different, be compassionate and empathetic. Second, employers tell us that Santa Clara graduates really do dedicate themselves to a purpose, a passion in life beyond getting rich and simply looking out for number one. You are less full of yourselves than the graduates of some other universities. Empl <laughs> Employers, employers and friends really like that. This is what employers mean when they say that there is another dimension to a Santa Clara student. A depth, a commitment to bettering the world, a, commit, a willingness to cooperate, a commitment to using your talents for others. Don't underestimate the importance of this advantage. It'll enable you to accomplish more, have deeper relationships, and be happier for your entire life. Some of you have found your passion while here at Santa Clara in engineering design projects featuring environmental sustainability, in business entrepreneurship, which serves the least advantaged, in education for the underserved, in a legal career that uh, seeks justice for all. Some of you will find your passion later. I found my own passion in an internship between junior and senior years of college, uh, an internship at Hewlett Packard. And the interest in business ethics has lasted with me for the rest of my life. You may well shift passions over a lifetime. There is no single uh, passion that probably will be a part of every year of your life. You will move from one cause to another, contributing in each of them. So be different, be full of purpose. Third, you're prepared. You're prepared for the unpredictable and sometimes troubling world that we face. I have spent my life studying how people prepare for, recognize, and handle life's ethical choices. When a boss asks you to falsify a report, when you're tempted to lie to cover up a mistake you made yourself, or when you have to deal with a colleague who thinks everything is competitive and that cooperation is for losers. Now, where have I heard that? Um, I have learned that every job and every role you will have has a set of predictable, even unavoidable ethical choices. One role many of us here this morning, not you graduates as yet, uh, share is that of being parents. Boy, do parents make a lot of ethical choices. My wife and I raised three children, and I think we got better with each child at not showing anger and when to let go. Uh, when to let our children do something risky and when to protect their safety and as college students and graduates when to advise and when to shut up. We got better at that. My biggest ethical failing however was as a spouse when I accepted a job in another city on the spot as soon as I got the job offer after having promised my wife that any career move particularly of physical move would be worked out together. That was 30 years ago, and I'm still doing penance for that uh, mistake. It is not worth it. Santa Clara grads know that there are unavoidable ethical choices in whatever their field, business, engineering, science, medicine, law, and any career path that they, they pursue. And they know the questions you can ask when you are faced with an ethical dilemma. And they've had these beaten into them, I'm sure. What choice does the most good and the least harm? Whose rights are affected by this choice? What's the fairest way to handle this? What action contributes to the common good? And what does good character, personal character, require here? Santa, Santa Clara grads, grads also know about the Jesuit concept of discernment, perhaps overdone at times, but the critical point is that you know that you have to create some space 
in your life to think before you act, to ask the really important questions in life, particularly when the pressure is greatest. There will always be someone hoping that you won't reflect too much. Graduates, be different, be prepared. The fourth difference than last is that Santa Clara graduates have significant courage. Making good choices in life involves and will involve deliberate sacrifices to turn down a questionable assignment or to admit your mistakes rather than cover them up, to pursue your passion rather than solely the path to wealth. It will sometimes involve putting some of your goals on hold for the sake of your spouse's career or while you care for an ill parent. My three children, all 30-somethings, are here. I hope they heard that last point, that be ready to take care of your aging parents. <laughs> there are many stories of courage that I could share today, but many which I can't because of their confidentiality. Santa Clara grads who headed off engineering disasters because they persistently raised safety questions at the right moment, corporate whistleblowers determined not to let misbehavior continue, graduates taking great risk to create companies with humane and ethical cultures and to launch programs and ventures for the poor around the world. And of countless graduates before you who have stood up for women and minorities who are demeaned in their organizations. We salute your forebearers who have made these a characteristic of their lives. My best and in some ways most courageous decision personally was to leave Stanford 17 years ago and its comforts. <laughs> to come to Santa Clara and to grow the Markula Center for Applied Ethics. It turned out to be the second best decision of my life after marrying my lifetime partner, Catherine. These choices, the courageous choices and the decisions of passion can bring a greater sense of fulfillment and happiness than you have ever had. Our experience and our hope is that Santa Clara graduates will be the courageous one, the first to speak up, the first to take the risk, the first to be willing to pay the price to do the right thing. So be different, be courageous. Class of 2018, I have however, a warning for you. The traits that you came here with and were fostered and developed at Santa Clara are not guaranteed. You will shape your own character and your own strengths every day of your life from this day forward. You will weaken or strengthen your compassion, your purpose, your preparation, your courage by the decisions that you make every day. Who you are tomorrow depends on what you do today. I hope you and your families will celebrate this morning that you are different from other college graduates. You are entering a world with great intelligence and a top quality education, but even more importantly, with a set of values and skills that the world desperately needs. And I believe and we believe practicing those values and skills will lead you to a life of the deepest fulfillment and the greatest happiness. Santa Clara, class of 2018, be different and Godspeed. <laughs>